Our first example in optimization is going to be an example of maximizing a total revenue function. The hard part of this is going to be forming the total revenue function, and then the calculus, hopefully you'll feel by now, is the easy part. Okay, so this is a word problem, so here's all the words. A phone company currently has 1,400 customers, and that's, they've got that many customers at a price of $60 per month. Then they did a research study, and the research showed that for each $1 decrease in the price, 50 new customers would be gained. Now with that model, what price should they set their monthly price at to yield maximum revenue? And at that price, what will the maximum possible revenue be? These are all really good questions. Let's see if we can answer them. So over here, I've got a little bit of strategy laid out. If we're looking for total revenue, as you've seen before, the total revenue is formed by the price times the number of items, or in this case, the number of customers. Okay, so mathematically, R of X is equal to P of X times X, where X is the number of customers, and P of X is the price. I write it of X because it's a linear function of X. How do I know it's a linear function of X? Is there something over here that tells me it's a linear function of x? Right here, it gives you the slope on that linear function. For each $1 decrease in price, 50 new customers will be gained. This sentence right here gives us a hint that this is a linear function because if we step down one in price, we're going to get 50 more customers each time. That's a constant slope, and so we'll be able to form p of x and the form y equals mx plus b. Okay, so here's our strategy. First, we need to get that price function, p of x, in the form p of x equals mx plus b. We've got to find the m. We've got to find the b. Then once we have that, then we can plug it in right here, and then we're going to form the total revenue. And that's great, because as soon as we have that total, total revenue, all we need to do is the calculus which is take the derivative, locate the relative extrema, compare those with the endpoints, and then we will locate the absolute extrema on R of x. All right, so let's get started. The first step in this process is going to be to get the price function p of x is equal to mx plus b. Now, actually, I feel like we've been through this before. Does this sound familiar? Did you do this in another class? Anybody take 147 with me? Um, I did a whole week on linear functions there, and I've got some great videos on how linear functions are used as models in business. So to review, I would like you right now to take the information you've been given on these first two sentences and form the price function P of X, where the answer is going to be in the form something X plus something. Okay, this is where the M goes, this is where the B goes. Can you do it? Do you remember how to do it? Pause the video and try it out right now. Okay, so I wonder how you did. Um, I'm going to go through it with you. This would be a lot easier for me if I had two points. Because if I had two XY points and I knew that they lied on a line together, they were connected with the line, then I could use my trick to get M, Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1, and then I could solve for the B, etc. This would just be a whole lot easier if I had two points, am I right? Now if you got stuck on this, the first step was going to be to write down two points, and then we're going to do all our line stuff that we learned last quarter on those two points, and then we should be good to go, okay? So if you really got stuck, you probably got puzzled by what are my two points going to be. And keep in mind that the two points are going to have the x coordinate for first and then the p coordinate second because the p is like the y. You see how the p is in the position where the y is for y equals mx plus b? Okay, so let's see if we can try to write down or fill in two of these points. Sentence number one. A phone company currently has 1,400 X's, and the price is P equals 60. Okay, so what does that translate to into math? What point is that right there? 1,400, and then the price is 60. Exactly. Now be careful. Don't get them switched. Some people just, for some reason, have an urge to put the smaller number first instead of the bigger one. Don't think about it that way, okay? You have to make sure that you keep the x in the x position and the y, or the p in this case, in the, in the second position there. So the first point's 1400, 60. 
All right, let's see if we can search for another point. Research shows that for each dollar decrease in price, 50 new customers will be gained. Does that mean my next point is like 1 comma 50? No. Does it mean it's 50 comma 1? No, that's not what it means. It doesn't actually give you the point with these two numbers here, but it kind of leads you on to derive your own next point. Like for example, if the price went down for one dollar less, instead of 60, what would it be? 59, right? So if the price was 59, then it went down one dollar. And what did it say was going to happen when it goes down by a dollar? You're going to get 50 new customers, right? So how many customers will you have then? 1450, exactly. That's how we get the new point. We have to take the hints that we were given and derive that second point right there. And now that we have the two points and we've thoroughly checked to make sure that we have them in the correct position, we can move on to form the linear function. All right, so if you didn't do this already, I'd like you to pause the video now with these points in hand and form the equation y equals mx plus b. I really hope you're trying to do this because you want to stay fresh on the old topics so that you can um, mix them in with the new topics. And so this is how it went here. The m is going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So that equals minus 1 over 50. And as a decimal, we can put negative, zero, negative 0 0.02. Okay, got that for the m? Yeah? And then step two is find the b. Did you remember how to do that? Find the b? You have to find the m first because then when you find the b, it's simply a matter of taking one of these points, and it can be done on either one, and you put the y where the y is supposed to be, and then you put the m in where the m now goes, and you put the x where the x is supposed to be, and then the last unknown is the plus b. Okay, so you can see from this that here b is going to be equal to 60 plus, because I'm going to move it to the over side, other side so the minus becomes a plus, so plus whatever 0.02 times 1400 is, and that has led me to concluding that b is equal to 88. Did you get that? I hope so. So if you did, congratulations, because you've really kept up on your previous topics, and that's excellent. Finding the equation of a line, one of our um, most important basic topics. Okay, cool. So then we can just, we're already done with this first step in our strategy, which was get P of X, and the answer is negative 0.02X plus 88. Okay. Now at this point, before we move on to the next steps in the strategy, you may wonder if you did that right. Are you even thinking that? I was thinking that. So how can I tell if I did this right or not? Well, I'm sure that these are my points that should lie on the line. So if I put a 60 where the x is, and then I crunch this out, do you get 1400? Wait a minute, wait a minute, no, 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 that's not what I'm doing. If I put a 1400 in where the x is, do I get 60 out? You should check that. Yeah, so let me show you how you're going to check. Before you move on, you want to check just using one of the points. If you put the 1400 in where the x is, times 1400, then you add 88, what do you get out of that? Punching it into your calculator, you get 60. Nice, that's exactly what that point says it should be, and so I've checked it, so I'm confident in what I've got so far, and you can even check the other point if you want, and just make sure that you're correct before moving on to that next step. Okay, cool. So the next step is actually a pretty simple step because the second part of my strategy was form the r of x function, which is p of x times x. And so if I take this function right here and multiply it by x, then that x becomes an x squared and the 88 becomes 88x like that. Okay, so now I form my total revenue function. And just as a quick check there, Usually your revenue goes through the point zero, zero, because if you don't sell anything, you don't make any money, right? And so if I plug in zero here, I get zero, and that's just a quick check that that's making sense to me. Good. And now this last step is going to be the hardest step, because it's going to be find the absolute max of R of X. Now when something says, what is the maximum possible, that means absolute. 
And if you've seen the introduction video, you know there's two types of extrema. There's the relative ones, which are just bigger or smaller than the things around them. And then there's the absolute one, which is like completely over all the possibilities. It is the highest or lowest. So usually the absolute one is the one that we're looking for. And here we're talking about the absolute max. Okay. And this breaks down into two sub-steps. First, we're going to look for the relative max. And then we're going to compare it with any endpoints. So we're going to compare that with the endpoints. And then whoever comes out as the highest y value wins the award for absolute maximum of my function. Okay, so now let's go on to the step where we find the relative max of r of x. Um, and also I would invite you to pause the video and see how far you get in this last step on your own. Do you know what to do from here? to find the relative maximum? That's right, you're going to take the derivative, right? So you take the r prime, um, so that's equal to negative 0.04x plus 88. And usually we would set this either equal to 0 or does not exist, but remember what kind of function we have? Polynomial, right? So then we don't have to worry about it not existing. Polynomials always exist. So we only have to set it equal to 0, and that leads us to say that x is equal to 88 divided by 0 0.04, and that magic number is 2200. Zero, zero. Nice. Remember, that might be a relative min, it might be an HPI. I don't really exactly know that it's a relative max until I perform the first derivative test. Okay, so then you're going to want to do the r prime sine number line. And then you're going to take off the critical point that you just located. And on one side, you take the test point. What are you plugging it into? Into the r prime, right? Because you're trying to get the sine of the r prime. And you'll see that on this side, it's positive, And on this side, it's negative. And because that tells me by the first derivative test that the function was on its way up, and then it hit a horizontal spot, and then it went down again. That classifies it as x is a relative max. Will be. So we're almost there. Um, but now what we need to do is compare that with the endpoints, if endpoints were given to us. And that way we can conclude what's the absolute max. Okay? Hmm. I wish I had a picture. Could I get a picture of this, please? Yes, yes, because I have the original function, right? So if I want, I can just take a picture um, or a graph. Some people don't like that word. So grab or take a picture of it um, on your calculator or other graphing device. And you will see that this is a parabola. Did you already know that because you recognize a quadratic form with the a less than zero? Awesome, great. So you know that this is a down-facing parabola, and therefore on a down-facing parabola, the vertex is actually the absolute highest point that it reaches. Right here, when x is equal to 2200, zero, zero, this not only is a relative max, but this is the absolute max. And how do I know that? I mean, I didn't check the endpoints, did I? Well, what are the endpoints? Did it tell me that um, this company can only handle a maximum number of customers? It doesn't say that anywhere. Did it tell me this company can have a negative number of customers? That's ridic Don't be ridiculous. Okay, so at least I know that for my domain here, in my domain, the x has to be greater or equal to zero. Because you've got to have a negative number of customers. But it doesn't say that my company can only handle you know, so many customers. So there's no high end to the domain here. That's why I want to go to this picture because I can see by the graph that this function is going up and it hits its relative and absolute max and then it goes back down and then the rest of the time is just always going down, okay? Why is it negative here? Because with this pricing scheme you can see this is um, a down-facing line, like this is a line that's sloping down. So eventually, if I have too many customers, I will be offering it at a negative price. That would be ridiculous, so I'm not even going to consider offering that price scheme for a um, very large x over there, because then I'd be giving it away for free or even negative in price. Um, and anyhow, you can see that's the highest right there. Alright, I feel like we've done our job, but did we do our job? 
Um, we have to go back and make sure that we answered exactly the questions that were posed to us. Question number one. What price will yield maximum revenue? Did I do that job yet? Did I answer that? I don't see the answer anywhere on the board. What price will yield maximum revenue? Do you know how to answer that? Well, I know that X equals 2,200 customers is the location of the maximum revenue. And I have a price function which dictates what my price will be given a customer level. And so in order to answer what price will um, yield maximum revenue, I only need to plug in 2200 into the price function right there. What is my price when my number of customers is 2200? That's $44 per month. Because you see it was a monthly price anyway, so what price will yield maximum revenue? The answer to that question is $44 per month. There you go. That's the answer to the specific question that was asked of me. Okay, the next specific question is, what is the maximum possible revenue? Do we answer that question? Um, well, it says absolute max right there, so that's good. But what is that number? Like, how am I going to find that number? Do you guys know? I have the x value, and it looks like this is an xy point. The absolute max is located at 2200, comma what? How am I going to get the y value for that xy point? Well, I have to remember what function I'm plotting, r of x. So plug in 2200 right there. And if you plug in 2200 into here, you should get the number 96800. Hopefully you got that number. And so the answer to that question is, what is the maximum possible revenue? The total possible revenue, $96,800 is my maximum possible revenue. In order to attain that revenue, I should set my price to $44 a month, and at that price level, I will then be servicing 2,200 customers, which is far more than my current 1,400. I hope you enjoyed that example, and then we'll have more and more videos to come.